Sutra. If at that time a person comes and says, You should give everything you have to me, the Bodhisattva says to himself, From beginning this time to the present, because of starvation, I have lost my body countless times, yet I never did even a hair's worth of benefit for living beings that would have been of wholesome benefit to me as well. Now I should, as those before me have done, renounce my life in order to benefit living beings. According to what I own, I should renounce everything, even my very life, without any stinginess. This is called exhaustive giving. Commentary These Bodhisattvas have everything that they need. If they use these things themselves, they will have long and happy lives. If they don't use them themselves and instead give them to others, then they will certainly suffer. Their sufferings will increase and their lifespan will decrease. Given this situation, suppose another person approaches him. If at that time a person comes and says, You should give everything you have to me. All of these delicious foods and drinks, fragrant flowers and handsome garments, all of those things you should give to me as a gift, all of them. The Bodhisattva thinks about the present situ situation and recalls his past, his own personal past. And so the Bodhisattva says to himself, From beginning this time to the present, because of starvation, I have lost my body countless times. Because of starvation, I have lost my life I don't know how many times, yet I never did even a hair's worth of benefit for living beings. For such a long time in the past, I never did the slightest act of good for living beings. I didn't aid living beings in ways that would have been of wholesome benefit to me as well. That is, I didn't plant any good rules. I haven't done any good things for living beings in the past, nor did I get any advantage of benefit for myself. Now I should, as those before me have done, renounce my life. Now I should starve as I have done countless times in the past. I have for all this good food and these provisions, but I'm not going to use them. Instead, I give them to this person, to this person who has come to seek. I'll probably be just as famished as I was in the past and probably die just like I did before. Although I have food, I won't eat it. I'll be like one who is oppressed by starvation in order to benefit living beings. In this way, I may be helpful to other living beings. All of this delicious food and drink, also these fragrant flowers, garments, and other kinds of material I should give in, uh, give in order to help out living beings. In the past, I have not done even a hair's breadth of benefit for others. Now that I'm so rich, I should help them out. According to what I own, I should renounce everything. Thereupon, he agrees to the wishes of that person and renounces everything he has. I will give even my very life. He is willing to do it without any stinginess. There should be nothing that I am unable to give up, including my own life. If someone says, I want to use your life, I certainly will give it to him. This is called exhaustive giving. This is the exhaustive giving on the Bodhisattva cultivating the ten inexhaustible treasuries. Exhaustive means giving everything one has. Exhaustive means there is nothing left, is all given away, even one's own life. Sutra, what is the Bodhisattva's giving of inner wealth? Disciples of the Buddha, suppose a Bodhisattva is youthful and robust, upright and handsome, clothed in fine garments and adorned with fragrant flowers, having just received anointment on the crown of his head to make him a well-turning king and who is replete with the seven jewels and ruling over the four continents. Suppose he is approached by a person who addresses his lordship, O oh, great king, 
know that I am now old and decrepit, plagued with many illnesses, friendless, childless, emaciated, and eccentric. My death is not far off. If I had the king's body, hands, feet, blood, flesh, head, eyes, bones, and marrow, I could go on living. I pray that the king will not be calculating or stingy, but will look upon me with kind thoughts and give himself to me. Commentary What is the Bodhisattva's giving of inner wealth? Now, those who study the Buddha Dharma should think about this. What path do you, do you want to cultivate? That is to say, where do you want to be reborn? What do you want to be? Do you want to be a bodhisattva or practice as a solitarily enlightened one or a shravaka, a south hero? Do you want to be a heavenly being or a human? Do you want to be an asura or cultivate the path of a hungry ghost? Do you want to be reborn as an animal or do you want to be reborn in the house? Whatever path you want to cultivate or practice, You can be a guest in that path. The Sanskrit word is Gati destination. If you want to be a Bodhisattva, you can be a guest in the Bodhisattva path. But at no time you should think, nor should you think that you are in charge, that you are the host. If you think that you are in control, then you are a test. You should be objective. Look at things objectively when you cultivate these dharmas. When you cultivate the path of a bodhisattva, you give. When you cultivate the path of a south hero, you only cultivate what's good for yourself. When you cultivate the bodhisattva path, you do what's good for everyone. When you cultivate the path of one enlightened to conditions, you practice the twelve conditioned links to co-production, which are ignorance conditions karmic activity, which conditions consciousness, which conditions name and form, which conditions the six entrances, which conditions contact, which conditions feeling, which conditions love, which conditions grasping, which conditions existence, which conditions birth, which conditions old age and death. South heroes cultivate the following noble truths of suffering accumulation, extinction, and the path. One who cultivates the Bodhisattva path cultivates the six perfections, the six parameters, and the ten thousand conducts. The six parameters are giving, morality, patience, vigor, trans, samadhi, pranas, wisdom. To be a good a god, you cultivate the ten good acts of no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, No harsh speech, no double-tongued speech, no frivolous speech, no lying, no greed, no hatred, no stupidity. If you want to be a human, hold the five precepts of no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no false speech, no taking intoxicants. How do you go about becoming an asura? What you should do is constantly Constantly keep a militant, fighting, aggressive attitude around you all the time. This is the drama ending age and everyone likes to fight and struggle with everyone else. That is because Asuras have been born out of this earth in great numbers. Now if you want to be a hungry ghost, just maintain your ignorance. Don't give anything. Hungry ghosts have this characteristic. They are unwilling to give anything whatsoever. Therefore, they are hungry ghosts lacking everything. If you want to be animal, then bring forth your ignorance. All of your devon views, wear them on your sleeve and keep them in front of you when you do things. Keep this ignorance around and before long you'll be an animal. How about the house? If you want to be reborn in the house, go out and kill people, set fires, break all the laws you can find, then you can fall into the house pretty easily. You can be reborn in whatever path you wish. For whatever seeds you plant, you'll reap the corresponding fruit. A bodhisattva cultivates giving. Giving means 
giving to other people, not telling other people to give to you. Here, in our Kuan Yin recitation session, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva can help you out if you are really sincere and work hard at your cultivation. It's easy to get a chance to open great wisdom so you won't be as stupid in the future. What's more, there's an opportunity to open your five eyes. You can't get all of the six spiritual penetrations, but the five eyes can come. When you recite the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, the Bodhisattva comes down to aid you and you can become enlightened on the spot immediately. Once enlightened, you possess great wisdom and great eloquence. You get the Buddha eye, the Dharma eye, the wisdom eye, the heavenly eye and the flesh eye, the five eyes. When you have the five eyes, then when something happens, you are not as stupid as you were before because now you understand cause and effect. You understand what's right and what's wrong. Everyone has a share in this Kuan Yin Bodhisattva recitation session. You can obtain whatever you want, whatever you seek. You can have whatever you wish for. This is an inconceivable and ineffable state. Not only do we people recite the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, but all other Bodhisattvas recite the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva as well. Because the vow power of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva is so great, anyone who recites the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva can very quickly leave suffering and attain bliss. One can end birth and death, obtain great wisdom and light, gain a long life, and increase his eloquence. All of these things can be accomplished, but if you don't encounter a wise advisor to teach you, then you understand none of this. No matter who you are, if you feel something like a bug crawling around on top of your head or on your face, don't rub it with your hand. Don't pay any attention to it. This is the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas rubbing the crown of your head, helping you out. People who understand the Buddha Dharma who experience this shouldn't pay attention to or become attached to it. Even people who don't understand the Buddha Dharma still shouldn't rub their face with their hands when they experience this sensation. This is really important. If you rub or scratch the place where the Bodhisattva is rubbing, rubbing your crown, you interfere with what he, what he is doing. You brush away the Buddha's hand. If you experience this sensation, just be patient. It's a time when you don't want to move your mind. Remain unmoving. The Bodhisattva gives inner wealth. So the text says, Disciples of the Buddha. Suppose a Bodhisattva is youthful and robust, upright and handsome, clothed in fine garments and adorned with fragrant flowers, having just received anointment on the crown of his head to make him a will turning king. He is a youthful Bodhisattva who is full featured. Various garments and flowers adorn his person. He has just received an anointment on the crown of his head. When a Bodhisattva receives an anointment on the crown uh, from the Buddhas, he becomes a Dharma prince. He can become one of the four kinds of world turning kings, either gold, silver, copper, or iron. The gold world turning king governs the entire universe, all four continents. The four great continents are Jambuvipa in the south, Uttarakuru in the north, Apara Godaniya in the east, Pova Viteha in the west. The silver wheel turning king governs three continents, the copper wheel turning king governs two continents, and the iron wheel turning king governs one of the great continents. This Bodhisattva is the gold wheel turning monarch whose domain covers all four continents. He is replete with the seven jewels and ruling over the four continents. He has all seven of the precious things in their completion. The seven kinds of precious jewels are the wheel jewel, the elephant jewel, 
the horse drawer, the drawer of the divine pearl, the drawer of able ministers, the drawer of the jade maiden, maiden, the drawer of generals. At this time, suppose he is approached by a person who addresses his lordship. Suppose now that there is a person who requests an audience with the king. So the goat will turn in king. He says, "Oh, great king, know that I am now old and decrepit. I am not young any more like you. My eyes don't see very clearly. My hair is all snowy white, and my teeth." Have all fallen out. I'm plagued with many illnesses. I have contracted serious diseases. I'm friendless, childless, all alone, and very isolated. I'm emaciated and eccentric. My death is not far off. I'm skinny as a rail, very cadaverous looking. Death is practically upon me. If only I had the king's body. You are so young now. If I could get a hold of your body, your hands, feet, blood, flesh, head, eyes, bones, and marrow. If you would give me all those things, then I could go on living. My own life would certainly flourish. I could get fat. I could be young again. I'd have a lot of energy, and I wouldn't die. I pray that the king will not be calculating. Or stingy. My wish is that you, O、oh、King, will not think of yourself. Don't have a second thought. Don't even think about it. Don't think that you can't give up your hands, blood, your head, your flesh, bones, and marrow. Don't be stingy and refuse to give this to me. But I hope the Great King will look upon me with kind thoughts and give himself to me. I want you to regard me with compassion. King gave everything to me. All of you think about this. Who could do this? Who could give on a scale like this? I think no one would be able to give one's own head, bones, marrow, flesh, eyes, hands, and feet. But if you can't make this vow, you are not a bodhisattva. If you dare to make this vow, then you are the same as all bodhisattvas. Sutra at that time. The Bodhisattva says to himself, "In the future, my physical body must also die and will be of no benefit to anyone. It is fitting that I should immediately relinquish it to save living beings." Having had this thought, he gives himself away without any regrets. This is called the giving of inner wealth. Commentary. This youthful bodhisattva has the position of a king and has all of the seven jewels and riches. Such a wealthy and distinguished person is approached by an old person who comes to beg from him. This old person is on the brink of death. He definitely must have had a doctor tell him to get a blood transfusion because he didn't have enough blood. So he goes to the great king to beg for his blood, flesh, head, eyes, bones, and marrow. He wants the king to give him all of these things so that he can prolong his life. At this time, he says to the king, "You shouldn't wait any longer. You shouldn't more, more over it, or consider it to the point that you might change your mind and decide not to offer them." Having such a person. Come before him to back in he this way. The king is able to achieve the he this merit and virtue. This is called sacrificing oneself for the sake of other people. One forgets about oneself for the sake of all living beings. At that time, the bodhisattva says to himself, "In the future, my physical body must also die, even though I am as wealthy and honored as is." Possible to be in the future, I will die just the same," he said. The fish flit around in the water. People knock around in the world, not knowing to do good and virtuous deeds. They steal their hands, steal their hearts, and commit crimes. They may pile up gold and silver as high as mountains, but when they close their eyes for the final time, the whole world is gone. 
they go before King Yama empty-handed, weeping tears with bitter regret. The Bodhisattva has this contemplation. When it's time to die, I too will die and will be of no benefit to anyone. I won't be able to benefit other living beings or myself. It is fitting that I should immediately relinquish it to save living beings. Now this person wants to beg from me. He wants my head, eyes, bones, and marrow. I should quickly take advantage of this opportunity and make this offering in order to rescue living beings. Whatever has benefit for living beings, I should quickly do without waiting around. Having had this thought, he gives himself away. After contemplating thus, he gives away his head, eyes, bones, and marrow to living beings without any regrets. His heart has no grace. He doesn't make any offering and then regret it later on. This is called the giving of inner wealth. This is the third type of giving within the ten inexhaustible treasuries, treasury of giving which the Bodhisattva practices. People say, how can this be done? How can you actually sacrifice your own life as an offering? You can't do it because you are not a Bodhisattva. If you were a Bodhisattva, then you'd also be able to do this. A Bodhisattva doesn't act on his own behalf. He's not attached to himself. Therefore, he is able to give up his own body, mind, nature, and life to all living beings in order to benefit them. If only something has benefit for living beings, then he will definitely do it. Whatever can be done, he will do. What is impossible to do, he still will do. It's not so easy to bring forth the Buddha heart. You have to practice what people can practice and give what people can give. This is truly a Bodhisattva who brings forth the resolve for Buddha.